Welcome to this video tutorial on using V-Ray's scatter tool to create and visualize landscapes in Rhino. I'm going to be working with this scene here which is a small structure on top of a kind of hill and in the render it currently looks like this where we've got some materials on this building and this sort of landscaped hill in front of the structure and what we'll be doing is we're going to be adding in some grass and flower models and scattering them over this surface to create a more detailed landscape here. Now the models I'm going to be using are required from Megascans and I'll put a link in the description for where you can acquire these models. I'm going to be using this grass model here which is a 3D model of some blades of grass and it has accompanying textures as well and within there we've got a few varieties of that and some texture files we're going to use. So we're going to start by just importing that model in and texturing it up for use within our scene. So to do that we'll just go to file import locate the model we want and when you're working with megascans assets they often come in different levels of detail as you can see here these levels of detail stand for the accuracy of that mesh and the kind of amount of faces within each of those models the higher the level of detail the lower the number here and you'll see the file size is different now for a scattering of these objects we don't need a high level of detail because we're not going to see it up close to the camera so I usually go for a sort of level of detail 2 or something similar and we'll import that there and just click yes to that and here you'll see it will come in as a mesh we may need to rotate it so we can kind of get it at the right angle so, so I might just rotate it so it's flat and you can see I've already brought in some other ones here as well. Um, what I usually do is just drop these on their own layer to keep the file tidy as well. Now once we've got that we also need to create a material for this model so it renders correctly in our scene. So I'm going to open up the asset editor. I'm going to create a new material here. Just a generic material. I'm going to call this grass and in here we're just going to load in the texture maps that come with our kind of particular grass model we're using so under the diffuse we're just going to load in a bitmap find that particular file we're looking for which is here load in the ablido which is the diffuse sometimes it's called ablido sometimes it's called diffuse so usually the one with the color and the main other one which is the opacity which will cut out the blades of grass for us and you can see the opacity map here it looks like a kind of black and white texture where black will be cut out of the material and white will be left solid leaving us with these individual blades of grass there so we can load that in and there you'll see the grass is now cut out now it might be that you also want to add in to the reflection the gloss map here to give the leaves a bit of shininess. I usually kind of copy that from the reflection and into the glossiness as well so it's both controlled by that map and you may also want to add in a translucency just to make the leaves a little bit transparent in this kind of grass material. Um, if you do that you want to add in a volumetric one and under the scatter color we can load in a translucency map as you can find here. Now adding translucency will increase the render time slightly so do be aware that when you add that you are increasing the kind of render time of your file. And once you've done that we can just select our grass, right click and apply to selection. Now if we go to rendered view here we can then see that grass model as it's rendered and you'll find that you don't need to texture map these particular models we're bringing in from Megascans or other websites like this because they'll already be mapped for us. So the grass now should look something like this where well, we've got that kind of more accurate looking grass there and you can see I've got some other files as well. Um, don't worry too much about the kind of white edges on these. When they render out you won't see those. That's just in the preview there. So now we've got our material we're ready to now scatter it on our landscape. And to do that we're going to be using V-Ray scatter tool. That's found in the geometry section of the asset editor and if I click create asset go to geometries and then go to scatter here we can create a new scatter asset there. Now to add this to an object we first need to pick the object that the 
grass will be scattered on. And for my scene, that's going to be this kind of big green landscape here. So I'm going to select that landscape and then under my scatter object, I'm going to right click and apply it to selection, just as you would do a material. So we'll apply the scatter to that selection. Now what we're going to do is we're going to then apply the grass models to the scatter as well. And that's done by selecting the models you want to scatter and under the scatter tool where it says add guests, we'll click on the add guests option and it will add those two models on to that tool. And what you'll find is then we've got a little preview of all of those bits of grass scattered across our landscape. And as you can see, if we load up the render at the same time here, what that's doing is it's essentially taking these two models and it's just randomly scattering them across the surface of my object there. Now, by default, you'll find that it's probably quite patchy and it's not covering the entire sort of area of the object. The patchiness or the kind of amount of objects that are scattered is controlled by this density value. So if we up the density to a 10, you'll then see we get more objects scattered across that surface. So if you want the kind of total coverage, of the grass on the surface of that material, we need to up that density until that sort of matches up with my material. And here you can see that's now kind of rendering out those blades of grass nicely on the surface of that object. And I'm going to just increase the exposure slightly so we can see that clearly there as well. Now that's quite nice, it's kind of looking grass texture there. We can also play around with the scale of this and add a random scale to these objects if we want some bits to be bigger, some to be smaller. And you'll see by default it adds an automatic random rotation. So each blade of grass or each grass object is rotated between 0 and 360 degrees to give us that randomness there. Now with this landscape I not only want to scatter grass on it but I also like to scatter other objects in there like flowers and other things. Now there's a couple of ways we can do this. We can add more guests into this object here and what this would do is it will sort of add in flowers in there as well and if we try and do that so what we'll do is we'll find my flower objects I've got here. I'm just going to pause the render quickly. We'll select those and we'll hit on add guests there and you'll see that they've now been added in here as well. What I'm also going to do is you can see in the preview that it's kind of previewing every single object that's being scattered. We can lower down this value in the preview percentage to a lower value so it doesn't look overwhelming in the scene. So that preview is only 6% of what's actually being scattered on that surface. Now if we re-render that particular view here, we can have a look and see what that looks like with my flower models also in place. And these are kind of like a white flower, like a daisy, that's also being scattered on the landscape. So we've got a mixture of grass and flowers. Now, what you can see here is the flowers have kind of taken over there. We've got our kind of grass models, which are these first two, which have a probability of one. But then we have four flower models, which also have a probability of one. So at the moment, the grass is kind of, you've got twice as much flower as you do to grass. So we can actually change that. We can up the probability of the grass to 10 and then let's keep the flower at one. And what that would do is it will kind of reset the proportions of flowers to grass models. And you can use these probability factors to essentially sort of vary the way certain models appear in that scatter there. Now, what you can see here is happening is because the flower model is slightly bigger than the grass. It doesn't look very good. It kind of feels like we need to control these two separately. So in this case, what I'm going to do is we're actually going to keep the grass model in the scatter, but I'm going to delete out those four flower models I've added in. So we're just going to be using the grass by itself. And what we'll do is we're going to create a brand new separate scatter just for the flowers. So we'll have one for the grass, one for the flowers, and that way we can control the two independently of one another, which allows us a little bit more control in how these are scattered on the landscape. So we're back to just our grass scattered on that surface now. So let's stop and we'll kind of open up a new scatter and then apply it to the landscape as well. Now what you'll find is when you create a second scatter you won't be able to apply it to the same base material. 
we'll have to apply it to a different one. And that's sort of one of the um, drawbacks of the um, V-Ray scatter tool at the time. So one way around this, one way we can kind of get around this factor, is what I usually do is I'll just take my base here, select the copy tool, make sure it's copying vertically there, and we'll just copy it slightly below the previous one, like so. So it just sits below there. Then with my new scatter that I've made, my flowers, we're gonna select that new plane below and we'll just apply that to selection. So we have one plane on the top, which is for my grass, one plane on the bottom, which is for my flowers. And here we can add in those flower models as well. And what this will mean is when we render this out, we then have independent control of both the grass models and the flower models here. So we can actually then start to kind of move around the flowers independently of the grass. We can scale them down, scale them up. And here you can see that flower model is now sort of nicely scattering across that landscape there. And it's actually independent completely of the grass. So I can kind of reduce the scale if I wanted to. We could lower it down to sort of a 0.8 to 0.5 if we wanted them a bit smaller in the scene. We can increase the scale and the grass will stay the same because it's a separate scatter model. So it's nice to have that sort of independent control of that. Now what you'll find is with this flower model, when I up the density, if we wanted more of these, it will just start to kind of fill in all the space there. But it might be that you want to create kind of patches of flowers across this landscape. And to do that, we can actually control the density of these objects using maps. So you'll see under the density factor here, there's a little slot to put in a texture. So we can actually control that density using textured images. So if we click on that, and what I'm gonna do is we're gonna add in a noise map. So I'm gonna use the noise B here, that way. And this kind of black and white map can be used to essentially control the density in a random sort of patchy way. Essentially what this means is wherever the image is white, flowers will be, be placed, and wherever the image is black, flowers won't be placed. So you're gonna get a kind of patchiness, and you can start to see it already in the background of this image based upon this map here. Now, one thing to help us with this is we can use this levels here. And if we scroll these numbers up to a sort of 4.5 and a 5.5 there, what it does is it kind of increases the white values and the black values of that texture to make it much more patchy. And you can see here, this will then be applied to the surface of my model. So wherever it's white, we're gonna get flowers. Wherever it's black, we're not gonna get flowers. And you can see already that sort of patchiness of those flowers around my model there. And then we can just play around with the size until we get a nice kind of distribution. So you might want it slightly larger or you might want it slightly smaller. And here you can see that's kind of working quite nicely on that terrain there. So we can use maps as well to control this sort of density and the spread of these objects across the scene. In this example, we only used a noise map to create a random variation of flowers across our landscape, but you can use any maps like checkered maps or even sort of grid maps to create perfect sort of lines of flowers or scattering across a landscape or any image file you have to control the way the objects are scattered across that particular landscape. So the flexibility with this tool is quite open with the different results you can achieve. So that was just a quick tutorial going through how to use scatter objects in V-Ray to scatter kind of multiple small dense objects across a landscape. As you can see from these examples, this can be used up with lots of different sort of flower types, trees and other kind of environmental objects to create quite complex environments just using a kind of repeated single object that can be scattered easily across the landscape. I hope you found this video tutorial useful and if you want to watch any other videos on rendering in V-Ray and Rhino then please check out the videos on the channel.